Hello everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to cut a through mortise and tenon joint. It's quite tricky. It takes quite a while, but this is how you do it. Let's go. Right, so we've got our two blank bits of timber, so let's get in close and I'll show you what tools we need. Right, so to cut out this joint, firstly we need to mark it out. So for that we're going to need a marking knife, we're going to need a square, we're going to need a marking gauge and we're going to need a mortise gauge and a ruler as well. To cut the tenon side of it, we're obviously going to need a big old tenon saw, so grab yourselves one of them. And to finesse the tenon afterwards, a couple of chisels is really handy to have. And then to actually cut out the mortise, you're going to need to get a mallet and of course a mortise chisel. And finally, you're going to need some sort of novelty pen to mark out the joints of course, and a pencil is quite handy to have as well. And also another little addition you can have is a shoulder plane because it helps finesse the tenon a little bit more, but it's not essential. So. Let's get marking this out. Right, firstly, let's clear the bench. Okay, so the first thing to do here is just to establish which one's going to be our mortise and which one's going to be our tenon. And a lot of people actually get confused about which way round the mortise and tenon is. Um, the, way that, <laughs> the way that I used to remember it is that the T for tenon kind of looks like a tenon in a way. And the other way I used to remember it is mortise kind of has sort of like a, a deep sound to it, like mortise. And like you imagine saying that in a cave, it would be quite echoey and a cave's like a mortar. <laughs> it's how I used to remember it. So mortise is the one with a hole in it. Tenon is the one that sticks out. So with this through tenon, I have an option if I want to make it flush on the edge or if I want it to protrude a little bit. Now in the series that I did on how to make a practice joint frame, I did it flush with the edge of the timber. So on this one, I might as well have it sticking out. So firstly, let's mark, this one's going to be the tenon, I reckon and this one can be the mortise. So I'm gonna write that on there. And then I'm also going to do a face side and a face edge on both of these components. So this is what we're going to reference our square off, either the face edge from both edges or the face side using both edges like that as well. So you can get access to all four sides using just those two faces and that's going to ensure accurate marking out. So I'm gonna have the tenon protruding out the mortise about five millimeters or so. So I'll get a square on the face side and then slide that tenon component up and down that so I can choose how far I want it to stick out. Now I can also get a ruler on here to do this. So I'll measure about five millimeters which is around there. So then I can put a little knife mark on the tenon component right where that mortise component ends. So just a tiny mark on the corner there. Now I'll just make that a little bit deeper so I can easily see it. And there we go, that's where our shoulder line's going to be. So I've got a tiny mark there. And if I line that up with this edge of the mortise, you can see it's sitting proud by about five millimeters. So we're gonna square that line all the way around using a square and the knife, making sure that our square is always referencing off one of these two sides. So where's that little mark? There it is. And we've got our face edge here. So square referencing off that. I'm gonna put my knife into the mark slide the square up to it and then do a light score to start with and then gradually increase the pressure. And then we've got to go around this edge. So square on the face side, get your knife into that corner mark and then you can slide the square up to it and drag back a few more times. Right, there we go. So that is squared around all four sides now and now I can get our mortise gauge. Now, when you're choosing the width of your tenon here, you need to do it at the same size as your mortise chisel. The reason being, obviously the mortise, when we chop it out, is going to be the same width as this. So if your tenon is too wide or too small, it's gonna be a little bit of a nightmare to fit. So match the size of your mortise chisel. In this case, this is eight millimeters. So the tenon is going to be eight millimeters wide. So with this marking gauge from Veritas, what you can normally get is a sort of shaft clamp here. So you can offset these heads eight millimeters apart from each other and then move both rods in unison to one another. I don't have that clamp, so the way I tend to do this is get a ruler and put it on the shoulder line here and then just simply mark eight millimeters apart. So this component is 30 millimeters wide. So I'm going to mark 15 millimeters, which is the halfway point. And then because I want it to be eight millimeters wide, I'm going to mark four millimeters either side of that center point. There we go. So now if I put my mortise chisel up to that, that is exactly the same width as those two points. So then I'll get both of these lined up with those two points on there. And this is referencing the stock of the marking gauge from the face side. Right, and there we go. So instead of scratching them both at exactly the same time, just do one at a time and do light scratches as you go. So I'm doing the far side to start with, light pressure, and then increase it, and then the close one. And we're gonna do this round all three sides. Right, 
Okay, so that's all done now. And I want you to get in close here and see which way the bevels on this marking gauge are going. So as you can see, the bevels on the end of this mortise gauge are beveled into the tenon component that we're going to keep. Now this isn't much of an issue for the tenon component, but when it comes to marking out the mortise later on, this is going to be very important. But the reason I'm showing you this now is because when you set up this mortise gauge, you want to leave it in that exact position. So if you set it up the wrong way around now while you're marking out the tenon, and then it comes to cutting out the mortise later on, you're going to realise that it's the wrong way around, and you're going to have to swap it around and thus ruin some of your measurements. Flats of the mortise gauge going out towards the waist side and the bevels on them going into the keep side. If you have one of those old style marking gauges with the pin heads on them, don't worry too much about this. But after you finish watching this video, it might convince you to upgrade to something like this as opposed to the old pin style ones. Right, so now we've established the thickness of the tenon around all three sides, we need to decide on the width of it here. So I'm probably gonna just inset this about five millimeters again, and I'm going to use a marking gauge for this. So simply measure five millimeters from the stock, lock it all in place, and then I'm going to score round the edge of this component. Now, when you do this, remember, that's our face edge. So don't go scoring around this edge and then go from this edge because if this component isn't perfectly parallel, it's gonna make your tenon slightly tapered or too wide. So always reference it from this edge. If you have a lot of these tenons to do, it might be worth getting two marking gauges so you can have one for this close edge and one set for the far edge. But for this case, I've only got one to cut, so I'm just going to reset this one. So pressing against the face edge, Going to do light pressure and increase it. And then flip it over and do this last side. Okay, and then for the far side, just gonna measure in five millimeters, give myself a little mark, and then I can set the marking gauge to that as well. Okay, so that's all marked out. So let's just mark our waist around the edge of this so we don't cut out the wrong bit. Right, there we go. So there's the tenon all marked out. So let's move on to the mortise. So with this, I want the tenon to be pretty central in that component. So I'm going to get that centralized on there. So the tenon is lined up with the mortise and I've got the two lines that we've just scratched on with our marking gauge. So what I'm going to do with that is get them lined up like this. And then using those two lines, I'm going to hold both the components together to make sure they don't slip. And I'm going to put a little knife mark at each of those marking gauge lines on the mortise component. So transfer them across to the other component being careful not to chop off my thumb. And there we go, so we've got two knife marks which have now been transferred from the tenon onto the mortise component. Okay, and then I can use those lines on the mortise component and I want to extend those down this side and down this side. So to do that, we're also going to use the face edges and the face side. So put a knife into one of those lines, slide the square up to it and do some light pressure. So it doesn't need to be too heavy along the top here because we're going to be planing that off afterwards. And now down one of the edges, so referencing off the face side, knife goes into one of those cuts on the corner, slide the square up and drag it back. These ones on the outside can be a little bit heavier, but not too heavy because we might want to remove them later on. And then on the inside of this component, because the face edge is going to be on the outside, so on this inside face, I'm going to do this quite heavy because this is all going to be hidden by the tenon shoulders and it's going to get slammed by the mortise chisel later on anyway. So we're going to need these marks to be pretty prominent. Okay, there we go. So marked around three sides. We don't need to do this other one because that would be utterly pointless. So this, with the same settings, we're going to reference off the face side and scratch between those two knife lines that we've just put on there. So this is where the bevel orientation of the mortise gauge is very important. So I'll scratch this on first and then I'll explain that to you. So light pressure, just scratching between the two lines here and obviously doing one of the heads at a time. Don't try and do them both. Okay, flip it round, do the same. So again on this inside face, make them nice and heavy. Right, and with those both marked out, I'll explain this bevel orientation real quick. Okay, so I've marked the waist out of this middle bit here of the mortise, so that's obviously going to be removed. And you can see the bevels on the heads of this mortise gauge are faced into that waist material. And the reason we want this is because that bevel is going to leave a small shadow line on this side of the component. Whereas if these bevels were the wrong way round, you can have a little shadow gap that surrounds the tenon on both of these walls. It's not a massive issue because you can plane it off later, but if you really start digging this mortise gauge in, then you know it's gonna take a lot to plane out later on. If you do light scores, then it'll be easier to remove, but then it's gonna be harder to follow those lines. So this tends to be how I do it because then it ensures that I get a nice square wall on this outside bit and the bevel is faced into the waist area, which we're gonna remove later on. Okay, so with both of those marked out, we are ready to start cutting them out. Now, the order in which you do this is very important. You pretty much always want to do the mortise first as opposed to doing the tenon first. And the reason for this will be very apparent once I chop out this mortise. So let's do that now. 
Right, so when chopping out the mortise, there's a few things that you can do to make it a little bit easier for yourself. Firstly, see if you can cramp the mortise above a leg on your workbench. That way, when you're whacking into this with a chisel, you're gonna get much better power transfer. I've had to put a little spacer here in order to clamp that piece there. Whereas before, when I had it just between the dogs, it was floating out above this section here, which just wouldn't have been useful whatsoever. I would have lost so much power. And also, if I went too far with the mortise chisel, there would be nothing supporting it underneath, which means I could probably blow through the other side with this chisel, which would be absolutely catastrophic. The other thing I'm doing here is standing with my sight going down the component like this. So when I put the chisel in, I can see if it's rocking side to side. Obviously with this, I need to make sure it's going in perfectly square. If you stand round here, you can see this angle, but you can't see that angle. And the angle that's more important here is this one here. So this is where we want to stand. So let's get in close and I'll show you how to chop this out. Right, so with this, we're gonna get the chisel right in the middle like that, perfectly between those marking gauge lines, and then get it upright and give it some firm wax. Okay, that's gone down pretty deep. And now we can take a step back from that and take off, I don't know, about five, six millimeters. And then keep working back. Okay, and that's gonna be our final chop going this way. We're gonna leave quite a lot of material here. The reason for this is to remove that excess material, we're gonna be want to be levering against that material on the edge there. And if I was to chop right up against that line, it means that as I lever up, it's gonna damage below that and it might even go as far as exposing beyond the tenon. So if you leave a bit of sacrificial material there in the waist first, that can be damaged instead of beyond that knife line there. So now let's go the other way. Same again on the other side, we'll leave a bit of material there and then that can be our sacrificial material. You see it just gets absolutely mushed the further down you go. In fact, that's actually already gone beyond the line, so that is why I put a shoulder on the edge of the tenon there because that is gonna hide it. Right, okay, so that's all that waste removed, so let's go again. Okay, so we're pretty much approaching the other side now, but I don't want to smash through right to the other side. Firstly, because I don't want to damage my workbench, obviously, but secondly, because it's gonna be proper messy if I do that. So let's get all this material out first. Okay, so as we're approaching the bottom of the mortise, what I'm gonna do is put the chisel up against the side and I'm gonna stop it about five millimeters from the bottom there. So that is how far down I want to cut before working from the other side. So far, we've been working on the inside of the joint. So like I said, all of this is gonna be hidden by the tenon. So get that about five millimeters from the bottom and then I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape around it and that is going to be our depth stop. Very high tech, as you can see. Yeah, that's about as close as I need to get. So now, every time I whack this in, I can see how far down, oh, blimey, I'm getting quite close there, just as well as stopped. So I've only got to do a few small taps here. Right, there we go, I think that is all the waste out. So now, let me explain to you why we cut the mortise first. Right, so here you can see the tenon component laying on top of the mortise, and you can see that the mortise component is now ever so slightly wider, despite using the same mortise gauge to scratch the lines on both components. And that's because of the slight tippage that you get from the chisel. Basically, it starts bruising the walls of that mortise. So if I was to cut this tenon first, go right down to those lines and get it absolutely perfect, and then chop out the mortise by hand, by the time those walls have all been bruised up, you can see that it's gonna be slightly too big to fit the tenon and it's obviously gonna be wobbly in there. So if you've done mortise and tenons in the past and they always turn out wobbly, 
that is probably the reason why. Cut your mortise first and then make the tenon fit into that. Don't do it the other way around because the mortise walls are going to get damaged and it's going to end up bigger than expected. So up until this point, we've been working on the inside of the components. So this is where the tenon is going to be nested. All of this is hidden later on. And like I said, the mortise is going to end up wider than expected. So if I was to smash all the way through this, obviously that is going to hit my workbench and damage it quite considerably. It might blow out the timber on the opposite side. But also imagine how off that chisel is going to be at the bottom of this cavity, considering the top of it is already too wide as it is. So what I'm going to do to counteract that is flip this component over and we're going to start working from the other side. But to prevent any more bruising from the mortise chisel, I'm actually going to use a smaller chisel that is narrower than the width of this chisel. So this one is eight millimeters. I've got a little bevel edge chisel here that is six millimeters. So that's going to sit between the lines and leave about a millimeter either side. And because we've worked pretty much all the way through, leaving about five millimeters, millimeters of material a little bevel edge chisel such as this one will easily penetrate through that so I'm going to put it right in the center as I did with the mortise chisel and there we go we're through so now exactly the same movement as the mortise chisel a few small steps back careful not to hit either of those outer lines and I'm just going to keep working back until I'm about a millimeter from all four lines So now don't leave that material out using this side because it's going to damage that wall. That is our show face. Instead, maybe just sort of stab down into it and just press it through to the other side. Right now, working back through from the tenon side, so the inside face that's going to be hidden, and we're going to clean up these lines. So instead of whacking straight into it, I'm going to remove half of it first. Make sure to get between those lines. And obviously I'm only going to go as far as the masking tape here. That is our depth stop. Right, and then chisel can go into that line. There we go. That's that inside done. So now this other face. God, this one is absolutely mullered. <laughs> Then coming in from the show face again so we're going to get the chisel that's too small and we're just going to work our way back to those lines very carefully okay so that's the edges done and now we can do these long edges right so now we've got it in a vise and we're going to work to these outer walls get a wide chisel like as wide as you can find and obviously make sure it actually fits in the mortise first um, about a millimeter away from the material here so i'm going to take half of that to start with just be careful doing this because you don't want it splitting along the grain and going beyond that marking gauge line. Okay, and then we'll carefully remove that. So now these walls are spot on where they need to be, so we need to make sure we don't damage them whatsoever. Right, and we'll do a little bit of cleanup on those inside faces, just make sure there's no fluffy bits or anything like that. Right, so now we're going to just start checking these inside walls so you can put a ruler through it and you're basically looking for it to touch both this bottom corner and the corner on the opposite side as well so that's good there but then on this side you see I've got a little bit of a rock going on so I can see there's material in there and on this side as well I've got something going on in there so oh hello so I'm going to get a chisel in there and just carefully remove that You'll see, we don't want to damage these outer walls, so be very careful with them. You'll see, the cleaner in here you get this, the more time you take on it, the easier it's going to be to fit the tenon later on. So do take your time with it. Okay, so the mortise is all chopped out and that's cleaned up to the best of my abilities, being careful not to damage the outside edge. Now we can start chopping the tenon out. So as you can see, I've clamped it in here at 45 degrees. And that way, when I saw down these lines, I only have to focus on following two of them as opposed to all three of them if I was clamping it upright and sawing down the end grain like this. So clamp it like that. And then you've only got to focus on two at a time. So I'm going to cut about a millimeter away from the lines here. Okay, so that's that side done, and now let's flip it over and do the other side. Now 
Okay, and now we've obviously got some sort of like pyramid shape going on between there so we can get it upright and just saw down to the shoulder line. Right, and then before cutting these cheeks off, obviously we've got our marking gauge line going along the top here. So if we cut those off, then we're not gonna be able to follow that line. So we're gonna cut that first. Right, and then we'll cut these cheeks off first. Right, so because of the way we've cut this mortise, obviously it's quite bruised on the inside there, but on the outside here, that is spot on our marking gauge lines. So when cutting the cheeks off these, I've only cut the two large sides off. I've left these little ones on the edge here, and that way we still have our marking gauge line that we scratched on earlier for these faces here. And the reason I've left those bits of material on is because we can work back to the lines later on. Now, like I said, up here, we're probably gonna have to go a little bit larger than the marking gauge lines because that is where the mortise is a lot wider. Where Whereas on this end of the tenon, that is spot on the marking gauge lines there on the mortise. So because this is poking out about five millimeters beyond the mortise, I'm gonna trim this tenon back to be spot on the marking gauge lines for the first 10 millimeters or so for the tenon. So we can account for the five millimeters that pokes out plus about five millimeters inside as well. So we have got about a millimeter of material between this face here and the marking gauge line on top. So I'm gonna take that down to half a millimeter to start with and I'm going to do some very, very small taps. Because we're chiseling down end grain here, you really don't want to give massive wax here because it's, chances are it's going to split the wrong way. So little controlled taps. Okay, so we're about half a millimeter from that line all the way around there, and we're going to do exactly the same on the sides now. So for that first 10 millimeters or so, nothing more. Okay, now I'm gonna put my chisel into that line and I'm gonna tap it through until we start hitting the material that we want to keep. There it is. So we've passed through the saw cut and we've hit the material on the other side. So I'll do the same on the other side now. I mean, essentially what I'm aiming to do here is to transfer the marking gauge lines that were on this face onto the material that we're gonna keep. So when we chop these cheeks off, we still have a little reference line on there that we can work to. And now, because I've taken some small notches out either side, I can finish off the end grain. So I took it to about half a millimetre first. Now I can take it straight down to that line. I'll do the same on the other side. Right, and then because we carefully work back to the marking gauge lines, you can see as I put that in there, it's a pretty snug fit. That's all gonna hold itself in place. So now what I'm gonna do is chop these little bits off and we can trim the tenon to its final width. And again, we'll carefully trim back to these lines for the first 10 millimeters or so. Right, and there we go, because we've marked back to the marking gauge lines carefully. That is a nice snug fit in there. There's no side to side movement, but look, if you put it in the other side, it wobbles all over the place. So that demonstrates how much those mortise walls are bruised compared to this nice crisp side we've got on the outside. So now what we've pretty much got to do is just tidy up the rest of this tenon to make it fit in this gnarly bit of the mortise back here. Okay, and then to get this fitted, I'm just gonna get my face edges, both facing upwards obviously, and then just try and test fit it. So it's binding up there, so then I can stick it up against my dogs here, get a shoulder plane and just trim that part of the tenon back. So here I'm doing this with a shoulder plane. You can also do this with a chisel just by coming in from the side and paring away that material instead. But a shoulder plane gives you a little bit more control here. If you want to know a little bit more about shoulder planes, I did a tool duel between the Veritas shoulder plane and the Lee Nielsen shoulder plane. So have a look at that if you're stuck between which one to buy or you don't know what to look for in a shoulder plane. Thank you. 
Right, okay, let's test fit these then. Oh, okay, almost there, so a little bit more trimming back here to do. Right, so now we're approaching the final fit, we can start cleaning up these shoulder lines, so there's about a millimetre of material, we'll halve it first. Okay, and now we can put the chisel into the line. Right, let's test this out then. So we know it goes in a certain amount. I think that last bit is just gonna take a little bit of welly. So I'll use my split top on the workbench and whack it into there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So there are a few small gaps on here, which is pretty much to be expected with through tenons. They are, I would, I'd love to say near enough impossible to get spot on. I'm sure it is possible to get them spot on, but I have never managed one with a perfect fit on there. But this is all right. Once I get it glued together, the glue will start filling those gaps. The wood will expand, so it should look pretty good. The only thing I'm going to do before I add glue to it is add some little decorative chamfers to the end of this tenon here to make it a little bit more... Um, nice to look at. So I'm probably just going to eyeball this to be honest. I'm going to do my block plane on these long sides, take a nice even amount of strokes. Yeah, six strokes looks pretty good. Cool. Right, I think we're ready to hit this together. Right, so to glue this up, I'm going to use my ever trusty cascamite because, you know, we've got those small gaps on there and this stuff is gap filling. So it is absolutely perfect for that job. So I'm going to put a certain amount in there. Not entirely, that's probably low, so not that much. Okay, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of water, not too much. Oh, that might have been too much. So it's going like bread crummy to start with. So that's sort of the first stage. And then if you keep turning, it might eventually turn into a paste. Yeah, it's starting to go paste-like now. You can see it all clumping together. It's crazy what this stuff does. <laughs> it changes so quickly. Right, so now it's like one big bogey. So I'm going to put a bit in this cap first. Mm, yeah, that'll do. Basically, you don't want this stuff too thick because if you put it on the shoulder lines, it's going to stop them pressing together. It's very difficult to explain the right consistency of it. It's kind of like trial and error. Right, so I'm going to paint it all over the tenon on all four sides. And it's kind of inevitable here that we're going to get some of it on that exposed bit at the end, so we'll have to clean that off afterwards. So maybe just avoid it with the glue to start with, but once it starts pushing through the mortise, it is going to end up on there. Okay, so that's all good. And then I think I'm going to do a little bit on the exposed end of this mortise as well, so any of those small gaps will be hidden. So just paste a little bit in there. So that's all going to be pushed to the edge. And so I'll put some at the entrance as well, just for extra strength. Right, this is going to take some welly to get this in, I think. It's pretty good. All the gaps are filled. It's made an absolute mess on the end of that tenon, but we can clean it up. So this is the other great thing about cascamite is that it cleans up very easily with water. Although I'm getting black fluff everywhere. Maybe I'll just stick to the white one. I'm more just cleaning off the black fluff than the actual glue now. Ow, Lord. Right, so we'll give it that little extra push that it needs with a few cramps. So I'll just get all of this rubbish out of the way first. Right, and with those both pressed in, I think that should hold itself in there now while I clean the rest of it out. Cool, so that's pretty much cleaned up. So I'll leave it for a few hours and then we'll look at the finished result. Right, so it's been drying overnight and it's glued up pretty well. All of the gaps have closed up. There's no issues there whatsoever. This chamfer looks nice on top. There's no exposed glue. I just gave it a quick plane to get it all flush, sanded some of the edges. But yeah, just take your time with it. It is very, very difficult to get right. You will screw up a lot of them before you get one that actually looks good. Um, yeah, best of luck with it. See you in the next video.